The Supreme Court has been part of our judicial branch of the federal government ever since our government was founded 250 years ago. But recently, in recent years, the Supreme Court has been under very scrutiny. Some people call in the court as irreversibly broken because as the court has grown way more conservative in recent years, people are saying the Supreme Court is more focused now on partisan issues than bipartisan issues. The Supreme Court has been broken for over a long time in this big divide. All of it pretty much starting in the 1980s. Now let's look back at the Robert Bork nomination. I today announce my intention to nominate United States Court of Appeals Judge Robert H. Bork to be an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. In 1987, President Reagan had a unique opportunity, one that had not occurred in decades to change the balance of votes on the Supreme Court in a far more conservative direction. Reagan had already appointed three conservative Republicans to the Supreme Court. Sandra Day O'Connor in 1981, the first woman to serve on the Supreme Court. Justice William Rehnquist, who was elevated to Chief Justice, and Antonin Scalia. But when President Reagan nominated Robert Bork, it was seemed a bit controversial at the time. Bork was forever known for his role in the Saturday Night Massacre, which was part of the Watergate scandal, in which President Nixon, after the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General resigned in protest, he ordered Bork to fire Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox, who was investigating Watergate and Nixon. And Bork, as acting attorney general, followed the order and fired Cox. But what came to light during this confirmation process was Bork's writings in newspapers expressing his oppositions about civil rights laws passed by Congress in the 60s and civil rights rulings by the Warren Court in the 1950s and 60s. He also expressed his opposition about women's rights in Roe v. Wade. My opinion is that there are too many laws in this country and that we are redressing too many petty grievances. Uh, Mr. President, I oppose the nomination of Robert Bork to the Supreme Court and I urge the Senate to reject it. In less than an hour after President Reagan announced Bork as the nominee, Senator Ted Kennedy walked out of the hearing and went to the Senate floor immediately after he heard the news to address the Senate floor on his opposition to Robert Bork's nomination. In the Watergate scandal of 1973, two distinguished Republicans, Attorney General Elliot Richardson and Deputy Attorney General William Ruckelshaus, put integrity and the Constitution ahead of loyalty to a corrupt president. They refused to do Richard Nixon's dirty work, and they refused to obey his order to fire Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox. The deed devolved on Solicitor General Robert Bork, who executed the unconscionable assignment that has become one of the darkest chapters for the rule of law in American history. That act, later ruled illegal by a federal court, is sufficient by itself to disqualify Mr. Bork from this new position to which he has been nominated. Robert Bork's America is a land in which women would be forced into back alley abortions, Blacks would sit at segregated lunch counters, rogue police could break down citizens' doors in midnight raids, and school children could not be taught about evolution. Writers and artists would be censured at the whim of government. And Liberal Democrats saw Bork as a person who would turn back the clock on civil rights and women's rights. The Constitution says the United States Senate has much as responsibility determining this on the court as the president does. That's what this is about. Hearing will come to order, please. Day one of Robert Bork's confirmation hearings started off with liberal guns blazing. The president sought to appoint an activist of the right. 
whose agenda would turn us back to the battles of a bitterly divided America. In his opening statement, Ted Kennedy created kind of the fiendish picture of Robert Bork. In Robert Bork's America, there is no room at the inn for blacks and no place in the Constitution for women. And in our America, there should be no seat on the Supreme Court for Robert Bork. Kennedy gave a very tough speech, taking on every one of Bork's positions. Long before the hearings happened, Democrats across the country began an unprecedented campaign attacking Bork's record, using newspaper ads and television to explain his problems. With respect to Robert Bork, our rights would be less secure. Robert Bork wants to be a Supreme Court justice, but the record shows that he has a strange idea of what justice is. He said there's no existing opinion. There certainly is. There is not. That is a vacated opinion, Senator. Bork's testimony was televised live for five days straight, and exchanges between him and senators on the committee grew increasingly combative. But the opinion is there. Wow. It's in print. It has been declared to have no legal force or effect whatsoever. And during these hearings, he said things that people thought were very bork. As you may have noticed in these hearings, I've been taking unpopular positions frequently in my life. But at the heart of Bork's hearings were his early writings. Way back in the mid-60s, when he was writing in a newspaper about a then recently passed landmark civil rights law and called it unsurpassed ugliness. And he also said in that article about his disagreement over the fact that the Constitution protected gender equality, the right to privacy, and abortion. Because neither is mentioned in the Constitution. Well, neither right? is mentioned. All that means is that the judge may not choose. Bork insisted that many of his views changed, but Democrats weren't buying it. You have stated views time again that would reverse progress for blacks, that would slam the door on women, that would allow government in the bedroom, that would limit free speech, that would undercut the principle of equality under the law. I can't say this enough times, you know, from beginning with Brown against Board of Education, I have supported black equality. And I've done that in print long before I got here. <clears throat> I have never said anything or decided anything that should be frightening to women. Now, you, you, uh, you're undoubtedly correct, Senator, that there are women who are apprehensive. I think it can only be because they don't know my record. And I regret to say I think there is no basis for the charges you have leveled at me. He didn't just give neutral answers when asked with, about these questions. He actually engaged in this dialogue with members of the J Judiciary Committee. But it seemed that every time that that man opened his mouth and was increasingly combative, it helped Democrats prove their case. During the last few moments of the five-day hearings, Bork's only supporter on that committee, Wyoming Senator Alan Simpson, asked him one last question. Why do you want to be an associate justice of the United States Supreme Court? And I think it would be an intellectual feast. Bork's answer was the final blow to his Supreme Court nomination. With his nomination to the Supreme Court in deep, deep trouble. Let us insist that the Senate not give in to noisy, strident pressures and that elected officials not be swayed by a deliberate campaign of disinformation and distortion. On the day of Bork's confirmation vote, Senator John Danford voiced out the fury that many of his Republican colleagues were feeling. The man's been trashed in our house. Some of us helped generate the trashing. Others of us yielded to it. But all of us, myself included, all of us have been accomplices to it. But in the end, 
After a big, tough vote in the Senate on this nomination, Robert Bork was finished. The Robert Bork nomination ended today. The yeas are 42, the nays are 58, the nomination is not confirmed. The Senate rejected Robert Bork's Supreme Court nomination, 43 to 57. It was not long after that when Bork submitted his resignation to President Reagan, resigning as an appellant judge because of the way he was treated throughout the hearings. Robert Bork's confirmation hearings were a good way to describe how the judicial process should work. Like the Reagan administration suggested Robert Bork, but the Senate said no. He was too conservative and they wanted a moderate. And what do you get for that? You get Anthony Kennedy, who was confirmed. After Robert Bork's nomination failed in the US Senate, it began a long, long controversial period in which the Supreme Court will become more conservative. Because one young man watching it all through in the United States Senate was a young one-term senator from the state of Kentucky, and his name was Mitch McConnell. And after Robert Bork was rejected, McConnell used that determination to make sure it never happened again. And throughout the 30 years since Robert Bork's nomination was rejected, Mitch McConnell worked up his way in the Republican Party in the Senate to get where he is today and to make sure conservative justices were put on the court the last 30 years. And that ultimately happened. Because in 2016, when Antonin Scalia died, President Obama wanted to appoint Merrick Garland to the Supreme Court, but Mitch McConnell refused, citing Thurman Rule, which stated that any Supreme Court vacancy in a presidential election year could not be filled unless a new president is installed. But Merrick Garland's Supreme Court nomination was never confirmed. The Senate didn't take up a hearing or a vote on his nomination. He worked to make sure members of his party stayed in line with his opinion. But four years later in 2020, September 2020, it was weeks away before the election, Donald Trump was president, a Republican, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg a Democrat appointed by Bill Clinton to the Supreme Court died. And again, this was six weeks before the presidential election. And then a day after her death, McConnell put out a statement and said that he would let the Senate fill the vacancy. Turning back on what he, he thought four years earlier, in which Democrats accused him of hypocrisy. Trump appointed Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. McConnell ultimately let through the nomination, let have a hearing and be confirmed, giving the Supreme Court a six to three Republican majority. Six Republicans, three Democrats, a super conservative majority in the Supreme Court. Robert Bork's failure in the Senate was only the beginning of the Supreme Court beginning to turn in a very conservative direction. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it was the basis for discrimination against women. I think that society saw all kinds of distinctions, legal distinctions between men and women as entirely reasonable and rational. This society no longer sees them that way, and that is fine. Well, Robert Bork's America, there is no room at the end for blacks, and no place in the Constitution for women, and in our America, there should be no seat on the Supreme Court for Robert Bork. Mr. Bork has been equally extreme in his opposition to the right to privacy. In an article in 1971, he said, in effect, that a husband and wife have no greater right to privacy under the Constitution than a smokestack has to pollute. In favor of the Bork nomination will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. 
The clerk will call the roll. The vote is five votes for reporting favorably, nine votes for reporting un nine votes against reporting favorably. The motion fails. I now place the second motion, a motion to report Robert Bork's nomination to the Supreme Court to the floor with a negative recommendation. The nomination of Robert Bork is reported to the floor of the United States Senate with a negative recommendation of nine to five. As you know, I've selected one of the finest judges in America's history, Robert Bork, for the Supreme Court. You've heard that this nomination is a lost cause. You've also heard that I am determined to fight right down to the final ballot on the Senate floor. I'm doing this because what's now at stake in this battle must never in our land of freedom become a lost cause. And whether lost or not, we Americans must never give up this particular battle, the independence of our judiciary. Back in July, when I nominated Judge Bork, I thought the confirmation process would go forward with a calm and sensible exchange of views. Unfortunately, the confirmation